Hello everyone, today is the 5th of Av, um, which is the yard site of the Arizal HaKadosh. His Neshama should have an Aliyah. Um, not that he needs one, <laughs> because he was one of the greatest Kabbalists, um, but um, I guess by it is always a next level of ascension so by him getting to the next level um he can perhaps lift us all up just like Moshe Rabbeinu was able to elevate all the Jewish people so um there's so much about the Arizal today and in many ways so little understood but much more understood than before. Um, I'm not going to explain who the Arizal was. Uh, I really con recommend everybody to learn about the Arizal. What's beautiful about the Arizal is that he, it's, he was a man who who was able to become um, to do things that we can all dream of. Um, I don't know if all everybody dreams like that, but you know when we think of uh, heroes, you know, super spiritual heroes, all the Marvel and DC movies, um, people having powers to see the future, to be able to see in someone's eye or face or hands, and 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 know exactly who you are, who we are in the previous life. Uh, what's your mission? What are your mistakes? Um, the essence of things, the aura of things. So, a knowledge, a wisdom, um, tools that most people uh, cannot do, and um, and it's very rare to be able to achieve that level because it requires real, real work on oneself and to be holy. Um, but it gives us the ability to see what a man can become. And, and you know, we could say that about other people. I mean, there's a Moshe Rabbeinu. Obviously, there may be different levels. But in, the way, in many ways, the Arizal is closer to us too than Moshe Rabbeinu in the sense that um, it was only 500 years ago, not 3,000 years ago. And... And, you know, we experience his presence and his wisdom and his miracles, so to speak, his, 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 his uh, qu qualities. Um, and um, therefore, it's much more tangible that we can do that too. There are people, very, very few people, who can do some of those uh, things today. Um, but they're usually hidden and they are rare, and they are not never going to tell you um, that they are such a person. Because the more you reveal, the less you are, um, the le the less you are entrusted with uh, those powers, so to speak. The easier it is to lose, because any sense of gaiva, any sense of I'm great. I'm super powerful, I'm holy, I'm this. Um, uh, if it's used, if it's transformed or translate into ego, into s uh, too much self-esteem, into I am, I am powerful, I am great, then the Shechina, meaning the real, the very essence of that power that enables him, his soul, to be able to do what he can do, um, basically uh, goes away from him um, so that's 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 the that's the challenge so in order for great people to stay great in a way they have to stay hidden um, the ultimate of that being Hashem Hashem is the greatest and he's the most hidden of all um, but yeah so what does the, uh, the one of the most powerful thing that the Arizal has um, taught us his his chidush in a way his novelty because there were 
you know, the Kabbalah started with all the way from Adam Arishon, who learned from the angel Raziel, and then it was passed down, Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, the 12 tribes, um, the few individuals who, who, who survived during the Mitzrayim, and then there was a whole amount of Kabbalah that was given and mount to the Jews at Mount Sinai, uh, mount Sinai uh, with the giving of the Torah, because there are four levels of interpretation when it's the Torah, so with the Torah came the level of Kabbalah also of understanding, and then he continued uh, through um, the, the teachings of the sages with the prophets, um, and then through um, the masters of the Talmud. And uh, let's remember, it says that every master in the Talmud could resurrect the dead, right? And we know it's something we can do. Um, there are 12 steps to to reach that. The Messiah Seshaim is based on that, based on the Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yair in the Gemara, that you can, once you reach a certain level of holiness and purity, you can even resurrect the dead. Um, some, something that the Arizal pro, pro, probably was able to do. Um, and then, so it was passed down and Sheikh Nisak the Talmud, and then the sages still the Ramban, and then the Ramban passed down throughout through, you no know, individual Kabbalistic. I forgot to mention Rabbi Shomba Yochai in terms of the Talmud, who wrote the Zohar, um, you know, and then his students. Um, but yeah, then the Ramban, and then the a few select group of individuals um, and then came the Arizal and after that we had the Baal Shem Tov, the Vinagaon, um, different Rebbes who took that teaching from the Arizal, um, but one of the most significant one is the Ramchal, or Moshe Chaim Lutzato, who understood probably the Arizal better than most other Kabbalists and um, who kind of started explaining to us how to understand the Kabbalah of the Arizal and how to read the Zohar. So, one of the major, um, one of the major discovery or chidush of the Arizal was the concept of partsufim. Now, I'm still trying to figure out what partsufim really are, but on a simple level based of what I've understood, you know, there are different books that can really help you. Um, one is called Yedin Nefesh, it's translated from the book Yedin Nefesh, Song of the Soul, Introduction to Kabbalah. Um, this is a great book, Shomer Emunim, Introduction, Introduction to Kabbalah, which is good. Um, and there is a third one, which is um, the Introduction to the Kabbalah by Rai Moshe Cardovero. Uh, trying to see if I see it right now. No, it's not here. Um, but those are three books that really will give you almost uh, any foundation, a clear foundation explanation about the Kabbalah. But obviously, it comes with the help of heaven that we can grasp those things. So, as far as I'm concerned, um, what it is that the Arizal has revealed or explained in, in, in his own way is that God runs the world with energies called this, we call the spheros. Um, and basically, until now, we understood, oh, this sphero does that, this sphero does that, this sphero does that. Um, but it can be confusing, right? This is very like a, like a chemical reaction. Try hard to understand. Okay, there are f uh, neutrons and there are protons and then there are electrons, and uh, this is uh, they each one does something. The Arizal came and kind of regrouped or showed the 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 the, the st structured world, and he took all the spheros. So, in as the Rabbi Ariel Barlev. 
Yechiel Balev, sorry, Yari Yechiel Balev says in the Song of Songs, Yidi Nefesh, he should be strong, gezun and hard and live long. He says, uh, every part of in the beginning is a sphera. And the sphera is the foundation upon which the specific structure will be built. The structure then is the parts of. So um, you have seen all those Kabbalistic drawings, I always show them, right, with uh, all the spheros. Um, right, so you have typical uh, sphero, sphero tree, right? So each one is a sphera, right? And the part of that will be one part of. You put all the pieces together. Okay, now what this is saying is that it's like I take an atom, you take the atom and the, the atom is the parts of, of um, energy, is the parts of or MC square, so to speak, uh, meaning it's the structure upon which the whole world is made. So what is the part of, of the atom? So you have within the atom, you have the electrons, which is negative energy. And then you have the nucleus of the atom, which is made of protons and neutrons, neg uh, uh, neutral, ne neutral charge uh, neutrons and positive protons. So when you understand that, then you have the part of you understand how it works as a whole and how you'll be able to interact. But um, it means that an atom might act differently if the neutrons or the protons or the electrons are manipulated or act a certain way, they will make things happen like a fission or an atomic bomb or, or, or fusion, so different things that can happen. So it's um, in the Shomer Emunim, he explains, it's like you have a face, so face, part of means a face, right? So you have my face and my face is, uh, represents me and you can see if I'm happy or sad based on my face. But then you can go in the eye or the nose or the mouth or the ear and say, and study each one of them in its own and the ear can hear but it becomes independent right it is the pieces of the structure it's like we know every part of um, the head is also a sphera um, and um, so the idea what i'm trying to say is that the part the 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 Arizal explains so there are five parts of him um, uh, Erechan Pin, Abba, Ima, Zeran Pin, and Nugve. Erechan Pin means long face. It's like, um, I like to call it like, you know, the, the grandfather. You have the grandfather who is wise and has all the wisdom and has everything understood and cleared up. Um, then you have Abba, the father, then you have Ima, the mother, usually they, con they translate as Chochma and Bina. Uh, Ari would be Keter, which is the crown, the 13 Midos uh, Then Abba and Ima, father and mother, are wisdom or information, uh, knowledge, and then, and, this, and then Bina, the woman, is understanding. And then you have Zeran Pin, which correspond to the six emotional mitzvot, so to speak, of six lower spheres. And then you have Nukva, which she, so the six lower spheres is Chesed, Gvura, Tifer, Nesahod, Yesod. And then you have Malchus, which is Nukva, um, which is the feminine. So you have the, the, like the, the boy and the girl, the, some the son and the daughter um or the male and female but not married yet so the the, the the they say that we we are trying to basically the ultimate goal is to unite zeranpinu nukve um 
and that's where I'm going with that because you know all those are very uh, uh, technical terms um, that requires you know time to understand all that. What I'm trying to show you or to share is the idea that the Aries all try to show that this world is similar to a family. This world contains, is united on the top, right? This Arechan pin, it's all that perfect harmony and, and mercy and love and unity. And then you have Abba and Ima, which are in love and united, father and mother. And then comes this world, which is split into two, right? And everything in this world, which was Bereshit, started with the bed, is split into two with a binary world, binary code. Male, everything is male, female. Um, even you have positive and negative energy in the atom, right? The protons are positive and the electrons are negative and you have the neutrons who are neutral. So it tells you already about the nature of the world, even on a physical level. And what we're trying to do is to unite male and female, to unite those two sides. So what, what it translates for, uh, for us today is to understand that if we want to bring a world of Tikkun, if we want to fix the world, we need to create real uh, healthy families. Meaning the greatest Kabbalist is going to be really whoever is able to create, understand the family dynamic, the dynamic between a male and a female, how we create harmony and love and mercy, how do we teach our daughters or our sons, Zeran Pin and Nugve, to interact with each other. But it's also has to do with us because Zeran Pin is the emotions and Nukve is the body and the, what, what, what we do with our emotions, the crystallization of our emotions uh, through, through mitzvot and through actions. So we have to um, try to understand that I need to first become one with myself I have male and female energy in me. I have emotions. I have my soul and my body. And I need to learn to be one and one with it. And create that part Sufim Yichud Tikkun within me. I need to love myself. I need to marry my Zeran Pin and Nukve. I need my soul to be in love with my body and my body to live, be in love with my soul and to unite those opposites. I need my head to fall in love with my heart and my heart to fall in love with my head. I need to have harmony between my... First of all, my Abba and Ima, my, the way my mind works. I need to be at peace in there to learn to think properly. And then I need, once I can think properly, understand what's good, I can go down in my body and use my emotions to embrace and trust my brain and respect my brain, my Abba and Ima, as, as well as my body. And, uh, and, um, and little by little, learning to behave in a way that this total harmony within myself and then we can do that with our spouse right um and our spa with our spouse is going to be our zerampin or our nukve it means that i'm going to need to learn to emotionally become one with the other and intellectually also so that Zer and Pin and Nukve will become one and and then, so to speak, be able to go, meaning the, the, the male and the female, the young male and female, be able to be one 
And when they're able to be one, they can rise to the level of being Abba and Ima and become parents themselves. It is why there is a mitzvah to have a boy and a girl. Why is it a mitzvah to have a boy and a girl? Who cares? Because a boy and a girl is going to help us understand the magic and the beauty and the perfection of the structure um, that you need male and female, positive and negative, uh, female and negative, don't get me wrong, but understanding one is recipient, that's why we call negative, it's recipient, and one is giver, is positive, um, so that's that that's what we mean. It's mathematical term or chemical terms, um, but we need both. Both are precious, and when 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 I have those two things, then you, there is a system that flows and that works. Um, so that's that's uh, um, I think a, a little bit of the understanding. I know it was not maybe very clear. <laughs> you need to have a bit about knowledge of, of those terms. Um, but to, for, for, to bring it to a language that everybody can understand, we need to restructure, to rebuild what the, the family system, the partouf, where the partoufim, what the family system is supposed to look like and, um, it started within us. This is, you know, I'm a marriage coach and social worker and a rabbi and the structure of the family and the way the male and female interaction exists um, within couples is so unbalanced and so not understood because there's a lot of trauma because we haven't been taught because of the Yetzirah because of the negative forces trying to dis do everything to destroy the family structure and the understanding of the harmony of male and female. And therefore we are in a world today where everything is unbalanced. Men want to be women, women wants to be men, um, men wants to be with men, women wants to be with women. So it's there's a whole disruption of the harmony structure that is part of creation and 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 everything is fighting that harmony so if we want to come to a world of tikkun a world of repair we will come to bring tisha Beav to become um you know, the day of Yom Tov, Besa Migdash, we need to focus. We need to focus on that harmony, on my personal male and female um, parts of, you know, energy, head and heart, thoughts, emotions, soul and body. Soul and body. Um, physical needs, emotional needs, intellect in, and spiritual needs. We need to care about every part of the part two. That's in a way what the Arizal brought. It shows how every part has its own world, so to speak. My heart has its own world. My emotion has its own world. The woman has its own world. The man has its own world. And we can have we have to respect each one's world, each, each one's dimension and, and needs, and but we need to be able to harmonize them all together. The challenge of unity is to, unity is the harmony of all the differences, the connection of between all differences. It's not making everybody being the same. My eyes have to say my eyes with and my nose and my mouth and my, ear so that each one does it function. If my ear wants to become my nose and my eyes my mouth, it's not going to go well. <sighs> Meaning they cannot be, it's pushing us to live in a world where there is no more jealousy. Everybody is so satisfied uh, for, at where he's at. 
Everybody is satisfied, and that's the true secret of happiness. I'm so satisfied to be who I am because I have a unique function. My function is my name, it's my mission. Hashem created me for this. And therefore, the moment I start desiring the position of someone else, the title, the name of someone else, I right away disrupt the system and I lose myself. This doesn't matter if it's, it, 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 if it's a gender or non-gender thing, if it's a, a career, quality, um, it, it goes in a, every areas. Don't want to be someone else. And actually in Judaism, incest, the reason why we cannot marry, it's my Rebbe explained to me, um, uh, um, and actually Rav Yaakov Weinberg speaks about it in, in the Pasuk that the man should leave his father and mother, where we learn the adultery incest is because if you marry your sister is like, or your parents or someone from your immediate family is like you're marrying yourself. And, and that, that, that's not the goal. <laughs> the goal is to marry the world, to marry the opposite, to marry the different. Because basically, otherwise, it's like I want to be the same with the same of myself. That's, that's, not, uh, that's not the goal. The wife is yourself, but it's a different part of yourself. It's a part that is opposite of you. It's the feminine. If you marry, you, you know, otherwise you marry yourself, so you're completely alone. That was Adam Arishon, I think, who only saw himself being alone and he didn't want to marry God. So we need to kind of go out of our way to understand how it works. Um, so there's a lot of food for thoughts. I hope this will uh, make you think uh, of the depths of what's something as simple as, as simple, <laughs> as completely apart to him. is one of the many concepts of Kabbalah, parts of him that the Arizal teach, but that how all those concepts of Kabbalah really goes into our everyday life. It's very, very practical. This is the biggest thing I've learned from my Rebbe, should be good and stark. Arab Simcha Lev Yosef Gades Rabbein Shena Chana. He should, he, he, he told me that, that, if you have a Kabbalah concept and you cannot bring it and teach it to a child and explain it in a simple way, then you don't really understand that Kabbalah. A, a real Kabbalist, and I'm not a real Kabbalist, I just want to say, I'm not a Kabbalist at all, um, it is the ability to really translate into simplicity what's complicated. That was Shlomo Amelech's greatness through Koeles and, and, and Michele. And, and this is what we have to do. Teach. And that's what Hasidus was trying to do, right? Also, and, and was successful in many ways to teach to children deep, deep, deep Kabbalah concept. You have to find the right words. Everything is a mashal. This entire world is a mashal. A metaphor. And um, we, we have to get there. Um, so, yes. I encourage everybody to learn the the Arizal came here for a reason in 1500s. His mission was to give new tools to understand how to be in harmony with the world, how to bring Tikkun to repair the world, how to learn the Torah on a, for our, in our generation on a deeper level, uh, the, the secrets of the Torah, and so that, you know, we can learn to go deeper and it was also a preparation for all of the technological and scientific advancement uh, that uh, that are, exists today the more if you want to understand kabbalah on a deeper level the more you know mathematics the more the more you know chemistry the more you know um mathematics i already said that <laughs> um but the, the more you understand 
quantum physics especially um, is the most advanced science of today I would say and, and and that can help us understand how to it gives you the, the tools the vessels says Rabbi Moshe Luria uh, from Israel to understand how to grasp the how to grasp the deeper understanding of um, you know of the of of of, of the Kabbalah it, it's 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 really the vessel the physical more practical um, vessel like have, like I gave the example with the atom um, that's the, the same same examples that we can use. Um, the quantum physics literally teaches us incredible things that uh, you 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 see what you truly believe, uh, which is the concept of Hashgacha Prati, so to speak, or, or Yiras Hashem, um, the concept that you are where your thoughts are from right, the Baal Shem Tov, um, that you can literally be connected to different places. Uh, we can calculate today the energy coming out of us, um, showing, proving to us scientifically that when you think a certain thought or meditate or pray, uh, and 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 you have certain emotions, it actually goes out of your body and affect the world around you. So there's so much to learn, and I encourage everyone. I hope this gives you some excitement, desire to learn more about Kabbalah. Um, remember the three best books to start learning about Kabbalah. Well, I would first of all start with De Hashem, the Ramchal, because if you don't start with that before the other ones, you're not going to understand. So De Hashem, the way of God from the Ramchal, um, which gives you a basic understanding of Judaism. And in there, it speaks about the different f forces uh, of the spiritual world that exist. Um, I'm looking around for, 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 for what's the most practical thing to... Um, yeah, but I will start with the Der Hashem it, because it contains everything. Then you have uh, the book from Moshe Moshe Cordovero, uh, Or Nirav, The Sweet Light. Um, um, in, in, in English, is Introduction to Kabbalah by Ktav Edition. Then you have Yedid Nefesh, or in English, Song of the Song, Introduction to Kabbalah by Rabbi Yechiel Barlev. And then we have this one, also is very good, Shomer Munim, Introduction to Kabbalah, um, which is excellent. Um, obviously, you have uh, the books from Rabbi Ari Kaplan, um, The Inner Space, Inner Space, uh, that is very good also to start with, is also an introduction to Kabbalah. And between all of those, once you read all of that, then you can go to the next level um, of, um, you know, learning more and more. But ultimately, you will need a teacher uh, to learn or understand a lot of that. Um, and more than that, you're going to need, we need a lot, a lot of um, character refinement. The more you work on your character traits, the more you will understand the deep character concept. Um, and I have to finish <laughs> with mentioning, obviously, Share Kedusha, which is the Raicham Vital's teachings I mean, based on the Arizal of the introduction to Kabbalah. Share Kedusha, the gates of holiness. It exists in English. Also, I don't know if it's still in print, but you can find it online somet uh, sometimes. Uh, the gates of holiness, Share Kedusha, you start from the beginning and then it goes deeper and deeper. And all starts with working on character traits. Um, obviously, not to forget, because it will be a sin not to, to, to say that, all of the Kabbalah is all hidden in the Talmud. Um, we have Mesechet Chagiga, Second Perik, um, and many other places, or the Agadatot, and, and the Midrash, and even Rashi hides in his commentaries the, the Kabbalah, but it's in so simple terms that we don't know about it. Um, and ultimately, it's all between you and the Chumash. The Chumash being the the lowest vessel uh, of Kabbalah. It's, 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 it's the book, is the code. The Chumash is the code. The, it says the whole Chumash is 
name, a God's name, the entire name, God's name. This is why it's all like one divine code. And, um, and when one knows how to interpret the code with the, the, the right, with the tools of the Mesora, uh, the way we're told in tradition how to interpret, to translate, then uh, we can learn how to read, you know, the secret and understand the Kabbalah from the Chumash itself um, with the help of Hashem. And uh, God willing, we should all uh, get closer and closer to God uh, this year more than ever before and rebuild the Beis Hamikdash. But remember that all that is for the purpose of creating more love, more unity in yourself, in the world, with your family, with your friends. That's all what God wants to see. It's not the learning of Torah itself. It's what the learning of Torah and Kabbalah leads you to do, which is to be a loving human being, someone who respects others, someone who takes care of those who are alone, those who are suffering, the orphans, the widows, the the destitute, the, the people who are sick, the people who are traumatized, abused, all those people who are alone and need help, the elderly, abandoned elderly, all those who suffer with who the Shekhinah is, though this is what's the, that's the greatest Kabbalah in the world. That's what, that's the greatest action that's that's bring Zeran Pin and Nukve together. You have someone in need in a posi position of negative, so to speak, like the electrons, and you become the nucleus of protons and neutrons feeding the electrons or enable the electrons to to spin around and to be uh, active. That's that's what we have to be. We all have to be nucleus, nucleus that have be that positive energy that enables others who are in a negative position, uh, meaning a position of receiving and and dependent on others for for help, for their for their gift, for their love, for their light, and being able to um, radiate and. And together we make a part two. Together we make a big family. Together we create total harmony and love. Baruch Adonai Lolam. Amen. Amen.